Yummy Kitchen. I'm Bittany and this is my Gigi. Hi friends, I'm really glad you stopped by today to join us in our kitchen. I've had numerous friends to ask me how to start canning, pressure canning and water bath canning, among some other mostly forgotten skills. And lately I've been thinking about it and I wanted to bless you by helping you learn to can and preserve food in different ways, as well as maybe some baking and other skills. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be making sweet pickle relish. This stuff is so good. I've given away quite a few of these uh, pint jars to different friends and everyone had, it's been a hit with everyone. So hopefully you're going to like it too. And it's a good place to start because we will be water bath canning it. I know many women when they first start out are afraid of the pressure canner. And I think that if you start out maybe water bath canning, you'll get the feel and kind of know what to do then. Um, what you're going to need for this recipe is going to be three quarts of chopped cucumbers, diced cucumbers, I should say. Three quarts average out to about 10 to 12 uh, medium sized cucumbers. The cucumbers that I have, this is about the average size of each one that I have. You're also going to need four large onions. You're going to need two red bell peppers, two green bell peppers. You're going to need four cups of apple cider vinegar. When you're canning, your vinegar has to be 5% acidity. So make very sure when you buy, whether it's your apple cider vinegar or your regular vinegar, please do not get anything that is not 5% acidity. You're talking about danger when you're canning. Um, botulism is very real, so please follow all safety procedures when you're canning, and we'll go over that too. You're also going to need two tablespoons of mustard seed, which I have here, and two tablespoons of celery seed. Now, my daughter uh, likes a little less celery cedar, <laughs> celery cedar, celery seed in her relish so I have ours at about a tablespoon and a half you can match whatever suits you and your family you're going to need pint jars now I went ahead and I'm going to do I have, think I have six or seven pint jars in my water bath canner which I'll be showing you here in a minute I have them in there I sterilized them in the uh, dishwasher last night and then this morning I got them out when I set up my canner I went ahead and put them in and put them on where they're medium heat in the water to keep them good and hot until it's time to use them and I'll tell you why I do that in a minute you're also going to need some canning and pickling salt you don't want to use anything but canning and pickling salt when you're canning and let's see if I forgot anything else you're going to need sugar and lots of it you need seven cups of sugar for this recipe like I said it is sweet relish um, um, also when you can you want some regular vinegar because we're going to wipe the rims of our jars off as we put them into the canner before we put the lids on the reason you do this is to make sure that your jars are clean and don't have any residue sweetness especially when you're working with this sugar um, you could have some residue on there that would cause you to not get a good seal on your jars now I have my jars already like I said sterilized they're in the can or waiting for me this is my jar lids I have them in water waiting after they've been sterilized I know people say don't sterilize their lids anymore I'm sorry I'm old-fashioned I still sterilize my lids and this is our rings that will go on the jars so you need those things. I have six or seven pints in the canner right now, the jars. So to be safe, go ahead and sterilize seven. Um, it depends, sometimes I'll get seven, I think I got seven pints out of this recipe last time. And then once I made it, it only got five. So we'll see what happens there when we get done. You're also going to need a pot on the stove. You're going to make a brine for this relish and uh, you will need a pot that's holding uh, large enough to hold the brine and all of the chopped up vegetables. So let's get started. I'm going to set the things that we don't need aside. We don't need these yet. But the first thing you've got to do is, and let me just say, before you ever, ever start doing any canning, always make sure that all of your area is very clean, has been very sterile because, like I said, botulism is very real. You do not want your family to get sick and botulism can actually kill you. So 
get real about it. Um, I have my canning salt in this because this is an unopened one and I have some that wasn't open, so I'm gonna set this aside. And we'll show you where we go to the beginning. This is the handiest little thing. This chopper, my sidekick here loves to use this chopper, don't you? And it's a lot easier. Now, the first time I made this recipe, I didn't have this chopper. And I watched somebody, uh, one of the homesteaders I watched, and I forget who it was, who was making something and they had this chopper. And I'm like, oh, I gotta have that. So I'll try to put the link down below came from Amazon and I'm telling you I love it except for the fact the first time I used it I went to wash it and slice my finger and I said okay I've got to be more careful when I'm washing this from now on but I really really like it a lot and I think that you will too so the first thing we're going to do before we do anything else is make sure that all of our vegetables are cleaned well y'all this was my grandmother's colander and I'll probably use it till the day I die and hope my daughter keeps using it. It's something about using things that you're, well, as a matter of fact, these were her little bowls too. Uh, it's almost like a piece of them in the kitchen with you when you use things that have been passed down through generations. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is to wash all my vegetables. I'm going ahead, I've already washed my sink out, and I'm going to get our onions cut up. And Bentley is going to, of course, to help me. He's my little handy dandy chopper. He just loves helping in the kitchen. If you have children, grandchildren, please take them in the kitchen with you. You love it, don't you? And I will always, anytime he wants to come help his Gigi in the kitchen, believe me, he is welcome. Last night, guys, he made his first fried potatoes, didn't you? Yeah, we love our fried taters, as we call them here in Kentucky. So, uh, let me get my knife and we'll start. I had laid my knife over behind, behind the canner and mercy, forgot where I put it. So, I'm going to get these going for Bentley. Can you what? Well, I'm going to do this part with the very sharp knife and it is very sharp. My son-in-law just sharpened these for me not long ago and thank We're going to get our trash in there. We'll get our onions and then I'll show y'all how this little chopper works. Well, let's let him go ahead and start. <sighs> <laughs> he hates chopping the onions, though. Something about those tears, you know. Uh, 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 that's how I cut my finger. In case y'all are wondering where we are that don't know, we are in South Central Kentucky. And we are getting rain for the first time yesterday uh, in a long time. And whew, did we ever need rain. Uh, people's all over the country, people's gardens are so burnt up. Let me help you. And um, no, I'm very thankful that. yesterday, don't get your hand in there, when I woke up and it was raining. Hey, you can't put your hand in there. It's a little hard sometimes for him, but guess what? He does a great job, except for the... Gigi worries about his hand getting in there. Easy. Okay, we're going to go ahead off camera and finish chopping these up just so we don't bore you guys with the chopper, and we'll be right back. We finished cutting up all of our cucumbers, peppers, and onions, and we've measured out into three quarts of the cucumbers. And of course, the quantity for the peppers are just two green, two red. Let me get my mess cleaned up a little bit here. I'm telling you guys, I make a big old mess when I'm canning, and you might find out you do too. I don't know. Now we've got to put salt on top of all this, and they will tell you a stainless steel or a glass bowl. I do not have a stainless steel bowl that is big enough for this or a glass bowl. So I use this Tupperware bowl. I've used it forever, and um, it is food grade plastic, of course, because Tupperware is. We're going to put our salt on, and it takes, I forgot how much it takes, so let me look at it. quarter cup of salt. I'm going to get my measuring cup. I'll just get this one. Can I 
Yes, you sure can. Just this, you're gonna sprinkle it all over the top of everything. Just that's it. Everywhere. That's good. That's good. Salt Thank you. Honey. Good. Okay, so you're gonna put your salt over it and then my hands are clean, please. Do you know what's happening? We finished cutting up all of our vegetables, cucumbers, peppers, and onions. And um, it costs always to put your vegetables in a glass or a stainless steel container. I do not have a glass or stainless steel container large enough for this. So we've covered it all with a quarter cup of salt, canning salt. And now we're just going to fill the bowl until it covers, just your tap water's fine, until it covers all your veggies. That's all you're doing. Quarter cup of salt and then I mix that around and now we're filling the bowl just where it covers the vegetables and what this is going to do is this is going to draw moisture i know it sounds crazy because you're putting water on here but the salt the brine that is from the salt is going to draw moisture out of your cucumbers and your peppers and onions so that they are not uh, mushy when you get done okay so we're going to set this aside and this has to stay i'm going to put the lid on it just set it on top of it it's going to stay for two hours so we'll be back with you guys in two hours after this is set bye <laughs> while our vegetables are under brine you guys i thought i would go ahead and show you the water bath canner that i'll be using today now you do not by any means have to purchase a special water bath canner if you have a pot that is large enough to cover at least one to two inches of water over the top of your jars, you do not have to go out and buy a special canner. The reason I bought this is because um, I'm tired of lifting heavy things in my life, and this has a spout that you can put right over your sink, and when you're finished, you can drain it. This can also be used for if you're cooking for a large crowd and you would like to make some, um, uh, cook your spaghetti or something like that, the pasta, uh, this is just great. Now I have put my jars in here to keep warm like I mentioned to you earlier. The reason that we do that is because if you put hot liquid, which our brine will be hot when we pour it in, into a cold jar, you have a possibility of your jars breaking and trust me, you do not want that to happen. So that is the uh, water bath canner that we're using today. If you're interested in that, um, that is I purchased this, I believe, on Amazon. Like, I purchased a lot of stuff. But um, it's also, I think, Walmart has it a lot. I'm going to go ahead and review the recipe with you guys. Now, you started out with three quarts of cucumbers. Chopped up, diced up. Four large onions, two large red bell peppers, and two large green peppers. And, of course, all of that will be chopped up. Chop all the veggies and then add a quarter cup of salt to them and cover them with water and let them sit for at least two hours. And then you're going to drain your vegetables and strain all the water out that you can and rinse them, strain them, and um, then you can go ahead and start your brine. If you want to stir it, yes, you may, sir. Bentley's going to stir that. In your brine, your ingredients for the brine is four cups of apple cider vinegar, seven cups of sugar, two tablespoons of mustard seed, two tablespoons of celery seed. You're going to bring your brine to a boil. Then you're going to add the cucumbers, peppers, and onions to this brine that's in the pot. You're going to allow them to boil for 10 minutes. And after that, it's down to business and we're gonna fill these jars. So while Bentley stirs this, we're going to let it come to a boil, and then we'll let you see. Our sweet up. brine is just about to reach a boil. It's just starting to bubble a little bit. We have rinsed the salt brine from the vegetables and pressed most of the water out. Now, this has reached a boil. I'm going to turn it down, and I'm going to begin to add in all of these vegetables, your cucumbers or your peppers and your onions. Oh, it smells so pickly good in here. I'm telling you what. 
you will never ever spend money on store-bought relish again once you have homemade relish there's nothing like it well you know i actually believe myself that everything homemade is better than anything you can find in the store i'm always opt for homemade of everything now we're going to go ahead and get all of these into this brine i've turned it down hopefully enough that it doesn't start boiling over on me And in case anybody's wondering, yes, my hands are clean. I've washed them about a hundred times today. And I'll probably wash them about a hundred more times before this is over with. Here we go into the pot with the sweet brine. About got it all. And you can see how there's quite a bit of water left in there from that bowl, even after me pressing out all that I did. So just try to get as much of that out as you can. The longer you leave it, the more they'll drain. You'll be fine. Let me discard that. I've got onions and cucumbers all over the place. All over the place. Now I'm just going to get these all underneath that good brine. Mercy, I wish we had smell-o-vision in here because it smells so good. And it's so pretty, y'all. It's just so pretty. Now we're gonna bring that temperature back up and let this come to a boil again. I probably could have used just a little bit bigger pot to do this too. Now it's kind of just a waiting game. While we wait for that to boil, I'll be wiping up a little bit. Some more of my mess. One thing I don't think I mentioned to you guys is that you really need to have plenty clean dishcloths and dish towels handy when you're doing this canning. While we're stirring this and watch it, that it doesn't boil over, guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you some equipment you're going to need when we start filling the jars. You're going to need something to lift your jars out of and place into the hot water. This is a jar lifter. Um, this actually will pick your lids up. It's got a magnet on the end of it. I'll show you use myself using it here in a little while. This helps you to measure the head space in your jars, which I will explain to you when we start filling them. And then you'll need a good size ladle. Um, I ordered this one off of Amazon and I'm telling you what, I love it. And it holds a lot, plus it has the curve. You can get down in there and you'll just, you'll love it if you get one of these. So you will need that. If you remember, I told you that I had my jars in the hot water in my canner. This is a Ball Fresh Tech electric canner. I do love it for the purpose. The main reason I like it is that I don't have to lift a heavy pot full of water and heavy jars. Uh, this has a spout that I can set it right here at the sink. Uh, I just grab a clean had to grab my jar funnel, guys. So we're going to start filling these jars. They are very hot. They just came out of the canner, and I'm going to start filling them up and I'm pretty sure this has a quarter inch head space on this particular thing we're canning and I'm going to check in just a second and see set that aside these jars are very hot I'm wiggling it a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and take my debubbler this is a very important step anytime you can you want to make sure you get all of the bubbles out you will have siphoning, which means you'll lose liquid out of them. Or if you have it too full, your jar could even explode inside of the canner. That would not be fun. Trust me. Hasn't happened to me, but I fear it happening every time I can. So we've got a little bit too much in there. Let me grab a spoon. We want to get that exact headspace. Make sure that we have it right. 
and I'm gonna show you how to measure it. And I told y'all I'm a mess maker when I'm doing this stuff. You'll believe me by the time we're done. Okay, so the other end of this debubbler, if y'all can see this thing, the other end measures your head space for you. Can you tell what it's like, a little stair step? And of course, the longest one is an inch and we're looking for a quarter inch head space. I wanna take just a little bit more out of there. Woo, woo, woo. And let me double check that, that did say quarter inch. Yes, quarter inch head space on this. So I'm gonna check it again. And we're very good. Now, when I told you, you wipe your jar lit, uh, rims. This is what I was talking about. You could also find a uh, little crack or something in your rim even though you check your jars every time you go to can. Check your jars. Make sure there are no cracks. Sometimes those little hairline cracks can be in one. I like to wipe the outside of my jar as well. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my lid. Place it on there and put my ring on. Now, a lot of people like to go ahead and fill every jar, well, fill every jar up and then uh, put the lids on all at once. Y'all do it any way that works for you. I like to just do a jar at a time and go ahead and set it in the can or out of the way. I wipe it all off because that sugary mess is so sticky. Now, what I'm gonna do, remember I had you to heat your jars up so your jars won't be shocked when it goes back into the canner with that hot brine Everything's about to the same temperature. So I'm gonna set that in the canner and I'm gonna get a different jar out. And we're going through the same process again. We're going to put our funnel in it. We're going to fill it up and we're gonna make sure that we have a quarter inch head space. If y'all can get one of these uh, ladles, let me tell you what. I've seen so many canners use them, and after I got one, I really realized why. I've tried all kinds when I'm canning. They either hold too much or they don't have the little spouts, but everything about this, I just absolutely love it. And, of course, you know where I got it, Amazon. So we're going to debubble, and I can already tell you I got too much in this. I'm good at that because I'm talking while I'm doing what I'm doing. Well, well, imagine me making a mess. So we're going to take some out because I can already look at it and tell you. Now, if I wasn't talking while I'm doing this, I wouldn't make quite the mess I am, but it's who I am. All right, now, remember, measuring for that head space and never, ever, ever go to putting a lid on without rock wiping that rim first jar's a little dandy hot there and that's it folks that's that's what we do to fill them up and put the lid on now when you put this lid on hang on having to wrestle with it when you put your lid on your jar make sure it's centered I hold my finger down there don't push it just hold it down where your jar ring this is called a ring the flat part is the lid and just put your ring on to where it's finger tight. And by finger tight, I just mean when you're holding your fingers like this, it's as tight as you can get it. You don't want it too tight. You could cause your jars to explode. You don't want it too loose. You could cause the lid to come off in the canner and lose all your goodies through siphoning. Siphoning is when you lose liquid from your canning jars. And I've had it happen. I've had it happen several times had things siphon and if you can very much you'll have the same thing happen to you all right guys i'm going to go ahead and fill these jars up and get them into the canner and soon as i finish filling the jars i'll be back with you i want to show you guys three books real quick that i ordered off of amazon they're very popular books they're very informative books and they have great canning recipes in them the first one is the amish canning cookbook this is great it is spiral bound which i really love spiral bound books when i'm in the kitchen cooking baking whatever canning spiral bound oh love it the next one that i want to show you is the all new ball book of canning and preserving this one also is spiral bound also from amazon and it has a lot of good information and it has some great recipes in it check that one out 
the number one book that I would recommend to you if you are just starting out canning is this book. It is called Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. And I really hope that every one of you will go out and buy this book. And the reason why is because there are so many safety uh, rules to follow when you're canning and it's so important that you follow those I've touched a little bit on botulism earlier it's not just about the cleanliness it's about your food reaching the correct temperature the correct pe pressure of your canning gauge all these things combined together make sure that your food is well preserved and not going to make your family or whoever else eats your food sick it's very important to, to follow these safety rules I should probably do a video on just the safety of canning. Don't just grab a, a Instapot and think I can can in this. You can't do it. You can't do it. You've got to have a pressure canner. You've got to make sure that it comes up to the right temperature and the correct pound of pressure to use it. And that is per your altitude. I am going to have to do a class on that, a video on that for sure. There are so many things that you need to know before you just start going in and filling jars with food. But I will try to, before we get into pressure canning, I will try to make sure that I cover all the safety issues that I possibly can with you guys so that you can rest assured that your family will be safe when you open up a jar. And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing like cooking dinner and going over to your cabinet and pulling out something that you have comb canned and fixing it for dinner it's just so much better than what you get in the store and the flavors better you know exactly what goes into it especially if you're growing your own food you know exactly when it was grown in that dirt when you harvested it what you add to it what you don't add to it and when you can it you definitely want it to be canned safety so get these books watch the videos and we'll do this thing together Okay, friends, our jars were in process mode for 10 minutes. We turned it, the canner off, allowed it to set for five minutes, and now we're about to take our jars out of our canner. Had to lay that hot lid aside. And this is another situation. You have to find a way to lift this out without getting burned as well, you guys. This stuff is hot, hot, hot. So always be very careful when you're pulling it out of the can. Lay it aside. And now here we go. This is what you've been waiting for and working for this whole time. Just look at that. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Oh, I can't wait for you guys to try this recipe and see how wonderful it is. And like I said before, you'll never, ever buy another jar of any store-bought relish. And you just can't put a price on making your own food, whether it's cooking a home-cooked dinner or canning something, preserving something in your dehydrator, whatever it is, there's something about a great, great feeling that comes over you when you do this stuff. And I hope I can encourage someone today to stop being afraid, get out there and get to canning people because there's, there's really nothing to it. As long as you follow the directions and as long as you um, follow safe protocol, all it is is fun. You're going to have a good time. So please rush out, buy yourself a canner, and let's get canning together. I'll be coming back to do more recipes with you guys and help you out all I can. I hope I've and encouraged someone today to start canning, water bath canning, pressure canning. There's nothing like it. Let me tell you, when you fill that pantry up with your own food that you've preserved, it really feels good. Bentley wanted to tell you guys goodbye. Goodbye and enjoy. Isn't that beautiful, friends? Now, when you go to store your jars, you let these set for 24 hours, and then you're going to take this outer ring off. And the way that you're going to test them is after you take the ring off, you're going to lift that jar. Now, keep your hand underneath of it, your other hand. 
while you lift it up to make sure that your jar is sealed. Now you can sometimes tell when the little seal goes down, but I always lift it by the jar lid, not this ring part that you screwed on, but the other part with another hand under it to make sure that it is sealed. Because if it's sealed, that lid's gonna stay on and you're gonna be able to hold it by that lid. Let them set then for 24 hours now with your rings on. Then you're going to take the rings off. You're going to wash your jars, all of it really good. Label it with the date and make sure that you do not ever reuse a lid, okay? That's something very important. So you can write right on top of that lid with a Sharpie. That's what I do. If you want some cute little labels, that's up to you. But you're gonna let this set for 24 hours and tomorrow, oh, you're gonna be loving the fact that you have canned your very first thing in a water bath canner. You guys enjoy. I'll be back with you again. And I hope you've had a good time today learning how to water bath sweet relish. Have a good night and God bless. And that's all there is to it, guys. It's just that easy to can this sweet relish. It was a great recipe. Don't forget to stop in over at Whipper Will Holler. Watch Miss Lori make it. And also, like this video, subscribe to this channel. I'll be back with some more fun stuff. We're going to can together. We're going to pressure can together. I'll try to teach you guys all that I can about safety issues when it comes to canning. And I want you to have a good time. If you have any questions, please comment down below. If there's anything special you'd like to see me can, please ask those questions, comment, and I'll try to get back to you. Have a blessed evening, and I'll see you next time. Friends. It's been 24 hours now, and I've taken all the rings off of our relish, and this is what I was talking about when I said check to see if the seal is on the lid. You just lift each one up. Now, I already checked these before I started filming, or I would not have lifted them without my hand being under them. Then all we have left to do is to put the date that they were canned on, what the, is inside, sweet relish, and six pints of sweet relish head to the pantry today. Y'all be blessed. Bye-bye.